I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 315, where I'm going to calculate or display inventory with a lag. This is method two. I showed you in method one how I used the select function to make this happen. This is in response sent to me from Dave. And he, again, he made my day because he asked me a question about Quantrix, and I hope that you'll ask me a question about Quantrix. So my day can be made, and so that I can help you become a Quantrix master. Anyway, method one that I showed in episode 314 is actually the preferred method, in my opinion. Method two it utilizes something known as the indirect function within Quantrix. And, you know, really a shout out to Dave on this one, because I sent the answer that I showed you in episode 314 to Dave, and then he said, well, I did a little research, and I think you can accomplish the same thing using the indirect function. And it looks like indeed you can. So here we are with the indirect methodology. Again, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'm receiving these, these purchases, and I want these purchases to come in however many months I have specified here after they're purchased. Okay, I want them to be acknowledged or received in, in, into inventory, if you will, ready for distribution. But how can I do that without using the select function? And Dave, again, he came up with an answer. And he, he simply said here, he said, in indirect, what I want to do is I want it to be equal to indirect purchases month this. And then he went ahead and concatenated the key with with whatever our inventory lag was here. And what indirect does is it goes ahead and it reads what is input in here in the indirect function as a text string, okay? So again, I think this is, this is pretty neat in the fact that if I go here and I hit Control D and look at my dependency inspector, the way that indirect is working is it's actually reading this as you can see here on my hover, purchases month this minus three, okay? So again, it's, it's reading it as purchases month this, but instead of a minus one or whatever, minus three here, that, that's what it's evaluating to, but he is making this part right here a variable, which is associated with this down here, and he's doing some concatenation again to get the syntax correct, right, with an ampersand. And then he's putting indirect in front of this here, okay? Like so, purchase, purchase. So that's how he's doing this, and then I think he's got it. So that also will evaluate much like I was showing with this minus three or minus whatever variable you have put in here. So again, if I take customer D and I make him like that, or maybe I put in a zero, does it still work? It actually does, it acknowledges it here. One thing that maybe is against the indirect function and why I prefer the select is because I don't believe that the indirect function will update if I were to change this and say I didn't want this to be purchases. Maybe I just want it to be purchase or a different name altogether. If I went ahead and did that, then you can see that I actually have an error. So my logic does not update. Uh, and the reason why is because, again, this part of the code is being stored as a text string. So for that reason, and there's other reasons why I wouldn't suggest the indirect function, I've heard somewhere that this is pretty inefficient with Quantrix in its calculation. So if you have a complex model, then using this indirect function like this will slow down your performance. Whereas a select function like I showed in the previous episode, it is, I don't know if you want to say lightning fast, but it's, a, it's very fast, it's very robust, and it even scales when I change the name. So again, indirect, sometimes you can use it, I don't use it very often, but usually I do use the select statement with a helper matrix to accomplish this sort of uh, task. If you have any questions about Quantrix, 
please make my day and reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com and ask me your question. Also, I would invite you to join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority on YouTube because I love Quantrix and I really want to make you a Quantrix master. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.